Kim Jong-un, leader of one of the world's poorest nations, lives a life of unimaginable luxury. But where does this wealth come from, and how does it reflect his power? Welcome to this discussion of the, the extravagant lifestyle led by the supreme leader of North Korea. Kim Jong-un's wealth is vast and shrouded in secrecy, offering a glimpse into a world of opulence that starkly contrasts with the conditions faced by his people. His life is marked by numerous residential properties, fleets of high-end vehicles, and an insatiable taste for the finest, priciest liquors. This is a man who, despite leading a nation plagued with difficulties, lives in extraordinary extravagance. His lifestyle, which includes a range of luxury items from yachts to racehorses, offers a poignant illustration of extreme wealth inequality. The opulence that Kim Jong-un enjoys seems at odds with the scarcity faced by the average North Korean citizen. Our video aims to shed light on this glaring contrast. We aim to provide an insight into the luxurious world of Kim Jong-un, a world that seems to be light years away from that of this exploration of wealth and power, seeks to better understand the man behind the title of supreme leader. We'll delve into the depths of his fortune, exploring its origins and how it is maintained. Through our investigation, we hope to unravel the behind Kim Jong-un's vast wealth and how it is possible for a leader of one of the world's poorest nations to accumulate and maintain such a fortune. The disparity between the supreme leader's lifestyle and the everyday struggles of his, his people is a central theme of our exploration. The question we seek to answer is, how does a leader of one of the world's poorest countries accumulate such wealth? Stay tuned as we embark on this revealing journey. Estimates of Kim Jong-un's wealth are staggering, believed to be between $5 billion and $10 billion. This is a mind-boggling figure, especially considering that North Korea's economy is one of the weakest in the world. But how does a leader of a struggling nation amass such a fortune? Let's delve into the secret sources of the supreme leader's wealth. The Kim regime generates a significant portion of its income through state-controlled businesses, from mining to manufacturing. Every business in the country is under the control of the state. This means the profits from these enterprises flow directly into Kim Jong-un's coffers but that's not the only source of his wealth. The North Korean regime is also believed to engage in illicit activities to fund its operations, arms trading, cybercrime, counterfeit goods. All these are part of the state's unofficial revenue streams. But perhaps the most significant source of income for the regime is the country's mineral exports. Despite being economically backward, North Korea is rich in natural resources. It's home to vast reserves of coal, iron ore, and other valuable minerals. The regime exploits these resources to fund its operations and line the pockets of the supreme leader. Despite international sanctions aimed at crippling the North Korean economy, the Kim regime has found ways to bypass these restrictions. Through a vast network of black market operations, the regime continues to import luxury items and grow its wealth. These sanctions have done little to halt the flow of money into Kim Jong-un's hands. Instead, They've only served to further isolate the country and exacerbate the economic hardship faced by the average North Korean. In the next scene, we'll delve deeper into Kim Jong-un's rise to power and how he has managed to consolidate his wealth and influence despite the challenges posed by international sanctions and a struggling economy. Kim Jong-un's wealth isn't just hoarded away in secret vaults. The supreme leader is known for his extravagant tastes with a lifestyle that rivals that of the world's wealthiest individuals. Let's start with residences. Kim Jong-un reportedly has multiple palaces and mansions scattered across North Korea. One of the most well-known is the Rongsong residence, also referred to as the Central Luxury Mansion. It's a sprawling complex with its own underground bunker, private beaches, and state-of-the-art security systems. But the Ryong Song residence is just the tip of the iceberg. The supreme leader is believed to own several hidden estates across the country, each more opulent than the last. Then there's transportation. Kim Jong-un's garage is said to house a fleet of luxury cars, including Rolls Royces and Mercedes Benz. But his love for luxury transport doesn't end with cars. The supreme leader also owns private jets and even a personal armored train. This train, reportedly bulletproof and stocked with gourmet food and expensive liquors, is often used for his domestic and international travels. But perhaps the most extravagant of Kim Jong-un's possessions is his superyacht, 
Nicknamed the Floating Palace, this yacht is reportedly worth millions and features luxury accommodations, high-end entertainment facilities, and even a pool. Kim Jong-un's taste for luxury extends to his personal items too. He is known to have a fondness for designer goods, rare liquors, and exclusive gadgets. Many of these items are smuggled into the country, bypassing international sanctions. This lavish lifestyle funded by the wealth of a nation paints a stark contrast to the struggles faced by the average North Korean. As we delve deeper into the wealth disparity in the following scenes, this contrast will become even more apparent. As we delve into the story of Kim Jong-un's wealth, it's important to remember that this tale didn't start with him. It's a legacy, one that traces its roots back to the very beginning of the Kim dynasty. Kim Il-sung, the founding father of North Korea, laid the groundwork for the accumulation of the family's wealth. Known as the Eternal President, Kim Il-sung's rule marked the beginning of a tradition of luxury and opulence. He built the foundations of the state-controlled economy, establishing industries that funneled wealth directly into the family's coffers. These industries, from mining to textiles, continue to be a significant source of income for the Kim family. Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un's father, continued this tradition. Known for his love of cinema and extravagant lifestyle, Kim Jong-il further expanded the family's wealth. He reportedly controlled secret funds held in foreign bank accounts amounting to billions of dollars. These funds, often dubbed revolutionary funds, were used to maintain the family's lifestyle and secure loyalty from the elite. When Kim Jong-un came to power, he inherited not just a nation, but also this fortune. He assumed control over these industries and the secret funds, adding to his already substantial wealth. The Kim family's tradition of opulence, passed down from generation to generation, has helped cement their rule. It's a stark contrast to the hardships faced by the average North Korean, a contrast that we'll delve deeper into in the following scenes. In stark contrast to the opulent lifestyle of the Kim family, the average North Korean faces a harsh reality. Food shortages, power outages, and extreme poverty paint a grim picture of life for the ordinary citizen. While Kim Jong-un and the privileged elite indulge in luxuries, the rest of the population struggles to meet basic needs. The disparity is staggering and it's fueled by the exploitation of state resources and the people themselves. North Korea's state-controlled economy funnels wealth directly into the pockets of the ruling class, leaving the majority of the population impoverished. The state's resources, instead of being used to improve living conditions for all, are used to maintain the lavish lifestyles of Kim Jong-un and his inner circle. This disparity is masked by a powerful propaganda machine that portrays Kim's wealth as a symbol of national strength and success. The regime propagates the narrative of a prosperous and powerful nation, with Kim Jong-un at the helm driving North Korea towards greatness. But behind this facade, the reality is starkly different. The wealth and prosperity are concentrated in the hands of the few, while the masses continue to live in deprivation. In the next scenes, we will delve deeper into Kim Jong-un's rise to power and wealth, and the extravagant purchases that further highlight this stark disparity. Despite international sanctions aimed at curbing North Korea's nuclear ambitions, Kim Jong-un and his elite have found ways to access the global luxury market. Using a complex network of smugglers, front companies, and diplomatic channels, the regime continues to import forbidden goods, adding to their opulent lifestyle. From Swiss cheese to fine wines, high-end electronics, and luxury vehicles, nothing is beyond reach for the North Korean elite. These items, banned under international sanctions, still find their way into the hands of Kim Jong-un and his inner circle, revealing the extent of their global smuggling operations. These smuggling networks operate in the shadows, often under the guise of legitimate businesses, making it difficult for international authorities to track and stop them. In addition, diplomatic loopholes provide a safe passage for these contraband goods, allies like China and Russia despite being signatories to the sanctions, have often turned a blind eye to these activities, further enabling the regime's lavish lifestyle. This access to global luxury, despite crippling sanctions, is a testament to the lengths the regime will go to maintain their opulence, even as their country reels under economic hardship. 
In the following scenes, we will explore further how Kim Jong-un's rise to power has fueled this extravagant lifestyle and the stark contrast it presents to the lives of ordinary North Koreans. In the intricate power dynamics of North Korea, Kim Jong-un uses wealth as a tool of control and an instrument to maintain loyalty among the elite. High-ranking officials are rewarded with access to privileges and luxuries that are unimaginable to the average North Korean. This access to opulence serves as both a reward and a reminder of the regime's power, creating a system of loyalty built on material incentives. This strategy isn't unique to Kim Jong-un. Many dictators, from Saddam Hussein to Muammar Gaddafi, have used wealth as a tool to maintain power, rewarding loyalists with a share of the nation's riches while suppressing dissent with an iron fist. But there's more to Kim Jong-un's wealth than just political control. It also serves as a symbol of authority, reinforcing his image as a divine ruler in the eyes of the people. The state propaganda machine portrays Kim Jong-un's extravagant lifestyle as a symbol of his greatness, a testament to his divine right to rule. His palaces, yachts, and luxury cars are not just signs of his wealth, but symbols of his godlike status. This use of wealth as a symbol of authority is a powerful tool of control. It creates a narrative of invincibility, a myth that Kim Jong-un is not just a leader, but a deity deserving of such grandeur. This narrative, propagated through state media, reinforces the loyalty of his subjects and the fear of his enemies, further cementing his hold on power. But as we'll see in the following scenes, this grandeur and opulence stands in stark contrast to the lives of the average North Korean, revealing a tale of stark wealth disparity and economic hardship. The world has always been captivated by the grandeur and opulence of dictators, and Kim Jong-un is no exception. The stark contrast between his extravagant lifestyle and the poverty-stricken lives of his people has sparked both fascination and condemnation on a global scale. From his collection of exotic cars to his palaces and yachts, images of Kim Jong-un's wealth have become a symbol of his rule, a spectacle that has drawn the world's attention. But why does the world find this contrast so fascinating? Perhaps it's the sheer audacity of it all, the idea of a single man living in such luxury while his people suffer. Or maybe it's the mystery surrounding North Korea, a country so closed off from the rest of the world that every glimpse into its inner workings is a cause for intrigue. But this fascination is not without its criticisms. Human rights organizations have condemned Kim Jong-un's extravagant lifestyle accusing him of prioritizing luxury over the basic needs of his people. The United Nations, Amnesty International, and other organizations have highlighted the dire humanitarian situation in North Korea, drawing attention to the country's widespread poverty, food insecurity, and lack of basic services. They argue that the wealth amassed by Kim Jong-un could have been used to alleviate these issues, but instead, it is used to fuel his luxurious lifestyle and maintain his hold on power. Kim Jong-un's wealth also shapes his image on the global stage. He is portrayed as a dictator, a man who wields absolute power with an iron fist. And yet, there's also an air of mystery that surrounds him. His lifestyle, his wealth, his control over North Korea, all of these factors contribute to his image as a figure of fascination and fear. As we delve deeper into his rise to power and wealth in the following scenes, we'll explore how this image has been carefully crafted and how it continues to shape the world's perception of Kim Jong-un. The tale of Kim Jong-un's wealth is as murky as the secretive state he rules. Our narrative brings us to the year 2011, marking a pivotal period in North Korea's history. Kim Jong-un ascends to power following the death of his father, Kim Jong-il, inheriting not just a nation, but an empire of wealth and influence. Kim Jong-un's rise to power wasn't a peaceful transition. The young leader, still in his late 20s, found himself surrounded by older, seasoned politicians, all potential rivals in the power play for control. To secure his position, Kim Jong-un allegedly orchestrated a series of purges, eliminating those who posed a threat to his rule. This was not a game of chess, but a ruthless fight for survival. With Kim Jong-un emerging as the undisputed leader, the consolidation of power didn't stop there. Kim Jong-un tightened his grip on the state exerting control over every aspect of North Korean life. From the economy to the media, from military to education, every facet of the nation was under his command. This allowed him to amass an unimaginable wealth, with resources of the state flowing directly into his coffers. Kim Jong-un's wealth isn't just derived from his country's resources, it's also a product of his absolute control over the state apparatus. 
with no checks and balances, no oversight or accountability, the wealth of the nation becomes the wealth of the leader. The tale of Kim Jong-un's rise to power is a chilling reminder of how absolute power can lead to absolute corruption. It's a story of a man who has used every tool at his disposal to consolidate wealth and power at the expense of his people. With his unchallenged rule, Kim Jong-un's wealth has only grown exponentially. The tale of his rise to power and wealth is a stark contrast to the struggles of the North Korean people, a juxtaposition that we will delve deeper into in the following scenes. Kim Jong-un's spending habits are as excessive as they are eclectic. He's known to have a taste for the finer things in life, and his extravagant spending sprees are certainly proof of that. Let's delve into some of his most lavish purchases. First, let's take a trip to the slopes, where Kim Jong-un has reportedly spent around $35 million on a luxury ski resort. The resort, which is said to have been inspired by his time studying in Switzerland, is a playground for the elite, boasting top-notch facilities and amenities. Meanwhile, the average North Korean citizen struggles to meet basic needs, making the contrast stark and shocking. From the icy peaks, we move to the warm, cozy interiors of Kim Jong-un's personal cinema. Yes, you heard right. The North Korean leader is said to be a huge film buff, owning a collection of over 20,000 DVDs. His love for movies extends beyond just watching them. He's built a personal cinema to enjoy his collection in style and privacy. The cost of this personal theater? That's a state secret, but it's safe to say it's a sum most North Koreans can only dream of. And it's not just about luxury real estate and movie nights. Kim Jong-un is also a big fan of sports, particularly basketball. His fascination with the game has led him to amass a collection of Michael Jordan memorabilia, an investment that doesn't come cheap. From signed jerseys to rare collectibles, his collection is a testament to his passion for the game and his willingness to spend big. But while Kim Jong-un enjoys his extravagant lifestyle, the average North Korean citizen faces a very different reality. The majority live in poverty, struggling to afford basic necessities like food and health care. The disparity between the leader's lifestyle and the living conditions of his people is not just vast, it's staggering. These purchases are a stark reminder of the vast wealth disparity in North Korea. The extravagant lifestyle of Kim Jong-un stands in stark contrast to the harsh realities faced by his people, highlighting the shocking inequality that persists in the country. So where does all this wealth come from, you may wonder? Well, the fountainhead of Kim Jong-un's fortune is as murky as it is vast. The primary source, quite unsurprisingly, is a vast network of state-owned enterprises. From mining and energy to construction and agriculture, these industries bring in billions of dollars, all funneled directly into the Supreme Leader's coffers. Yet, this is far from being the only source. North Korea, under Kim Jong-un's rule, has been implicated in a wide array of illicit activities. These include cyber warfare, counterfeiting, drug trafficking, and even wildlife smuggling. Each of these criminal enterprises contributes to the growing pile of wealth, making the nation's dictator one of the richest men in the world. Foreign dignitaries also play a role in padding Kim Jong-un's wealth. Gifts from fellow leaders and diplomats are often extravagant, ranging from luxury vehicles to rare artifacts. These presents, while seemingly innocuous, add up to a significant amount over time. And then there's the darker side. The exploitation of the North Korean people is a crucial aspect of Kim Jong-un's wealth accumulation. Forced labor, human trafficking, and other human rights abuses are an integral part of this system. Workers are often paid pittance, if at all, and the profits from their labor are siphoned off to fund the lavish lifestyle of their leader. The lack of transparency surrounding these wealth sources makes it impossible to determine the exact extent of Kim Jong-un's fortune. However, what's clear is that the wealth is not evenly distributed. While Kim Jong-un lives a life of unimaginable luxury, the majority of North Koreans struggle to meet their daily needs. Kim Jong-un's wealth is not just a symbol of excess, but a testament to the exploitation of a nation. It's a stark reminder of the unchecked power of a dictator and the devastating consequences it can have on the people under his rule. In North Korea, the gulf between the haves and have-nots is as wide as the Pacific. A shocking reality, but a fact nonetheless. Let's delve into the stark wealth disparity that exists in this secretive nation. A disparity that is as astounding as it is heartbreaking. In the heart of Pyongyang, secluded from the world, resides the world's richest president, Kim Jong-un. 
His wealth, a staggering figure that runs into billions, stands in stark contrast to the average North Korean citizen. Imagine living a life with private islands, fleets of luxury cars, and a private jet at your disposal. That's Kim Jong-un's lifestyle, a picture of opulence that couldn't be more different from the reality of his people. Meanwhile, the average North Korean citizen struggles to make ends meet. The World Food Program estimates that about 10 million people, almost 40% of the population, are undernourished. That's four out of every 10 people who don't have enough to eat, the average monthly wage, less than $50. And that's if you're lucky enough to have a job. Unemployment is rampant, and those who do work often toil in harsh conditions for little pay. The contrast between the leader and the LED couldn't be starker. While Kim Jong-un indulges in imported cheese and fine wines, his people subsist on a diet of corn and kimchi. While he travels in a bulletproof train, his citizens make do with outdated public transportation systems. While he lives in a palace, his people reside in cramped, often dilapidated apartments. It's a tale of two worlds existing side by side, a world of unimaginable wealth and a world of crushing poverty. A world where one man's extravagance is another man's unattainable dream. While Kim Jong-un lives a life of opulence, the people of North Korea continue to suffer under the weight of poverty and repression, a reality we must not forget as we seek to understand the enigmatic leader and the nation he ruled.